friends and welcome back to another video. I will be painting my June rose which many of you have probably seen over on Instagram and I've shown little videos, little clips of it but this is the full video of me painting it so I'm going to walk you through my process. So first this is something that I always like to do is I like to do a light flat wash across um, basically all the painting, like everything that I'll be painting. So that's what I'm doing here. And as you see, I'm keeping that bead um, and it's very wet. So that's how I'm able to get a flat wash without variations of colors. And then I start on the first leaf. And what I did with the leaves is I did a, um, I was working very wet in wet, so first I did a yellow layer, and then I dropped in some green, um, a blue-green mix. And I also wanted there to be some red in the leaves as kind of a reflective color light from the roses themselves. So I added in some red. And again, I'm still working wet and wet, so after the first layer dried, I did a wet wash over it again, or a wet water wash all over it again, and then I was able to drop in some more colors to just deepen the values. probably two layers um, of dropping in color and letting it dry, I go in and start adding more um, fine details and darker colors, so the shadows. And I'm just using um, wet on dry here to gently mark where the veins of the leaves will be and giving the, the leaf some texture here and going in and doing a wet wash with the mid-tones and then adding in the the dark dark values And after getting the first leaf done, I decided that I wanted to go ahead and tackle one of the roses. And I was nervous with these roses because I'm not sure if I had exactly the right paint colors um, for to achieve the red red of the rose. I was trying to do a classic red rose. Um, so I was mixing some paint colors there. And I wanted the roses to have an inner glow. Um, so I did a light orange um, wet wash to begin with and covered the whole portion of the, the petal that I was working on and then I dropped in some red. And this is just pure Windsor red and I think later on I started adding permanent um, crimson but I wanted to keep the rose as true red as possible but that's not quite how it ended up I'm okay with it I like the more dark vintage color that ended up um, coming out and here I'm going in with I think either a thicker mixture of the Windsor Red. Actually, it's probably a mixture of the Windsor Red and the permanent Alizarin Crimson. And I'm still trying to preserve that middle portion of the leaf so you'll see me dab up some, some color and water to make sure that it stays light in the center of the leaf to um, portray that inner glow that I was trying to achieve. 
and I just did the same process on section by section for this little rose. And once I got one leaf down and one rose down, um, I decided to go ahead. I liked what happened with those ones, so I decided to go ahead and just continue the same process. So this is me doing the first layer of all of the leaves where I'm doing a layer of yellow, dropping in the blue-green mixture, and some reds. And after letting that dry, then I'll go in um, for a second layer, or sometimes a third or fourth, um, and just continue to deepen the values and kind of pull out the form of the leaf. down to this and next to this little little bud little rosebud here and that's what I have so far at this point now and then like I said after I do like one or two layers um, general layers then I'll go in and add some more um, details and shadows The leaves are getting pretty well done here. And I love just adding slight variations of color so I'm not working in just straight green or just straight yellow. I like to mix different mixtures, um, combinations of each of those colors, just to add some variance and some interest into the colors. Just adding little details here. Here I'm working pretty um, wet on dry and then here I'm coming in with just water in my brush, maybe a little, little of the leftover paint and just kind of smoothing out the edges of the wet on dry um, section that I just painted. Just I really like to smooth out the edges, probably too much, a little bit to my detriment, but I just like everything to be, have smooth transitions. Mm, adding the shadows was so satisfying, <laughs> so satisfying. It really just made the leaves pop, add some depth, and they, they really popped out from each other. It was very satisfying to do. And this painting was interesting because I wasn't looking at any specific reference photos. I had maybe like four or five pictures pulled up on my computer of inspiration pieces, like pieces that I that I liked, but I wasn't working from reference here. So that's why I worked in light layers so that I could gradually pull out the shape and form of each leaf in like from my head working from my head so focusing on where the light source is coming from and where the shadows need to be and if the leaf is turning a little bit this way how would the light and colors react with that way um, so it was fun it was a good it was a good challenge I do recommend working from reference photos though you learn so much and and then after you've done that for a while, it's easier to pull from your head the experience that you've, you've had painting from life. I was able to do the stem at this point, which was so satisfying. It was the last portion of the leaves um, that was left. Now to the final rose. I wanted to leave it very last because I thought it would be a very satisfying um, time lapse to film. <laughs> so, so I was working one petal at a time, one layer at a time, um, just softly building up shadows like where where I felt it should be darker and where other petals were casting shadows onto other petals. So I just worked one, one petal at a time. And after doing this first 
layer of the whole flower, I decided it needed more of that inner glow, so I added oranges, as you can see here. And then I'm going in for a second round of, of painting, adding deeper red, deepening the reds and adding deeper shadows. And then coming in for a third time, <laughs> doing the same thing, and trying to both preserve that inner glow, but also where the light was hitting it, and kind of that the relationship between those two, because they aren't exactly the same. It was so fun to put these really dark color, these really dark reds in. It just made the flower pop, and then adding shadows, so satisfying. And I was done. I took a few ref a few photos. I loved how they turned out. I think it's such a pretty painting. It's very vintage, which I really like. And I might continue to do some more in the future. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.